Dixis DBI's brother Panther. I've got a database here I've been monitoring. I'm going to do a response time analysis for this database. And what I see here is for the last eight hours, not much going on. I actually want to look uh, at the entire week. So I'm going to look at the performance of this database for the week. And I've got a quarter second response time. 85% of that time is inside the database. And the database uh, is a little bit more I.O. bound than CPU bound. I'm going to click on that I.O. pie slice. And Brother Panther just did the analysis to find the statements that are causing that database to be I.O. bound. So right there, I've got about two-thirds of all the I.O. in the database tied up in these four statements. I can pass those as a workload to the design advisor and apply DBI's advanced index benefit analysis methodology. So here's an I.O. bound database, two-thirds of all the I.O. in four statements. We're waiting for the answer here. Do -de -do -de -do -de -do. Oh, outstanding. And we can see we're going to get from 374,000 time runs down to 116 for a 99% improvement. Here's the indexes that we have the opportunity to create. And we can see the benefit of each of these indexes. If we add this first index, we'll get 49% of that savings. If we add this second index, we get 46% of that savings. And if we add this third index, well, that's not a very big contributor to all that savings. So I take these. Uh, first two, that's the bulk of my savings. Click on Create. There they are in my editor. I'm ready to go. And just like that, in, in about a minute, I just took two-thirds of the I.O. out of an I.O. bound database. Isn't that easy? Yes, it is. With everything going online and focus being set, being uh, customer centric, it is essential to have a system in place which is 24 cross 7 cross 365 available. Databases being the being the heart of any organization, to follows the same outlines as I mentioned. A very good morning to all. Today I'm Ankan Garg. I will be sharing my experiences and learnings on the technology HADR with ACR. What that's what I call a solution with a difference. Uh, earlier, when we had standalone solutions, the overall availability of our databases was about less than 80% in any given month, if you say, owing to various uh, known outages problems that we used to face. We have to do fixed pack upgrades, quarterly OS patching, parameter changes that are not online, some infrastructure changes like network infrastructure issues like network blick, or automatic the server getting rebooted. So we had to incur a lot of outages. And uh, being a pr production DBA, we uh, to take care of all these things, fix pack upgrade, quarterly OS patching, and all those things, we had to every time go to the application teams, request for the timelines, coordinate activities, which were really time consuming. Hence, it, there was a need of a solution or a system which is 24 cross 7 available, which is dynamic, universal, which does not require any special hardware. Where rolling update achieves, where rolling update, updates and updates can be achieved within no downtime to the applications, which is not only giving us the high availability solution, but also gives us something known as disaster recovery prospects. Also, in short, we would require a system which is robust, resilient, and reliable. And the only solution that DB2 offers, covering all the three R's that I've mentioned, is HADR. This is one of the IBM DB2 feature that keeps uh, primary databases and standby databases synchronized by continuously, repli uh, repli uh, continuously uh, replicating the data through transaction logs. The first part of my screen shows the high availability solution wherein we have a data center one at one location like St. Louis, wherein we have primary and standby and the transmission of logs is happening by one of the modes uh, known as near sync or sync. And the next part of my screen shows the DR solution. That what if if my data center one, which has my primary and standby, Excuse gets crashed me. due to I any hear. issues? I don't know if yeah. it's just me, but I'm not seeing your screen change. Yeah, I can't Neither see it I. as well. 
Yeah. Your, your screen is not moving forward. Yeah, we're still we're still uh, I'm, we're still on the title slide here. No, no, no. Oh, show my screen. Uh, are you able to see now? Yes. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm really sorry. Should, should should I start again or what should I do? Oh. Or shall I continue with it? Pick up where you left off here. Okay. So the next part of the screen shows the DR solution that what if, if my data center one by uh, assume at St. Louis get crashed by any issues like uh, some earthquake or some other thing that could happen, power interruption or hardware failure. Then through the super sync mode, uh, my data center two, which is at some other location like Lexington, will become up. So we learned that what is HADR, how it will work, but how to make sure that logs are getting synchronized. It is the red blocks thing that is the near sync and the, and the sync mode that helps in achieving the same. Uh, the sync mode. The sync mode is one wherein the transaction completes when, uh, when it gets an acknowledgement from the standby when logs are written both at memory and disk. So this is the best one. But what happens? This is the time consuming one. The, the best part, uh, and, and the next is the near sync, which I think is one of the best solution to achieve HA for our app, for the applications like us, OLTP mode, wherein it is only that till the memory, the logs are written, and we get the acknowledgement back to, in the system. Uh, to, to take care of the DR thing, we have the super sync mode, super async, which is wherein the HADR never enters into the PS state, while it will always be in a ro uh, remote catch-up mode. Uh, this is the mode by default, which is providing the DR solution for the database. Now, HADR value enablers. We have we are known like if my primary DB goes down, then my secondary will come up. But how will it come up? Either you need to manually take over the database, or you need to prepare some scripts. You need to schedule them and make sure that whenever the DB goes down, where due to some or the other condition, it should fail over. Or you can use the prepared the popular solution known as the TSA. Tivoli system automation, which is very easy to set up, like DB2 Haiku, and few uh, numbers comes up, you need to select and configure, and then you are great in that. So HADR and TSA are really like a booster to your um, things, uh, to, to your availability to the applications. Now, what next? We have made sure that we have DBs available 24 cross 7 by using HADR and TSA things. But what about applications? You imagine application batches running, and what if they fail in between? Do we need to re-trigger them? Yes, this was the solution when we didn't have the ACR in place. But now we have ACR, automatic client reroute. It is one of the power booster for HADR. What used to happen that you imagine a critical application batch is running, and at the nth moment, a three-hour batch, it terminates at two hours, 58 minutes. Then application needs to re-trigger the batch. So what this ACR does, if we have the ACR enabled, uh, the application batch will fail at that very nth moment and will try to reconnect the logic, will try to reinitiate the connection to the database, and the connection defined on the primary server before failover will automatically move to the secondary server. Hence, the transactions will be reinitiated without having to reconnect to the database. And what I feel, if my application codes, this SQL code 30081 in their logic, then we can have the zero tolerance or the zero outage, near to zero outage solutions we can provide to our customers. Now the next slide is all about my learnings and the best, practice, the best practices that we follow in terms of HADR. Uh, first, that we have already discussed, to use near sync mode for the OLTP based applications rather than sync. Next, we can have the DB spooling the spooling parameter enabled to specify the additional space, uh, which allows us to specify additional space where the logs can be spooled on standby. This avoids to give a bad pressure on the primary caused by sudden spikes in the logging activity. What if, if my HADR goes into congestion state? It will be a priority one incident for the application. The application will go down. No log will be processing. So immediately what you can do, you can deactivate the database at, at standby location and can later work on rebuilding your HADR and can increase in the log work size. Then you need to make sure that the application end, the, lo the logic is changed for the load operation with copy yes. And it is always good to have the DBCFG parameter block non-block to yes, which will make sure that, that it blocks all the non-blocked activities. 
last but not the least, these are the unavoidable benefits that we have got after the HADR implementation. The number of instances when we had to bring down the database due to any activity has considerably increased. And in the same diagonal, we had the number of incidents also that have decreased incidents uh, that we used to get due to DB down issues in UDB, giving us the 99.99 .99 availability to our customers. Network blip, uh, unexpected server reboot has also been addressed using the TSA and the HADR kind of configuration in our system. Thanks a lot. All right, Angar, thanks for your presentation. The, the, the duck did quack at you. But I let you go because it was an interesting presentation and there was a little issue with uh, showing your slides. With the slide. so, so that's fine. Is